All right, greetings family. This is Bomani Tamba. Welcome to our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community Conference Call. And today's date is January 19, 2020. And we just got back from Ghana and just came back from our community land uh, presentation that we did December 29, 2019. Uh, so what I want to do is go over that connection of our meeting with the chiefs and elders and the land that we visited and I want to base that based on documentation and go to all of the documentation and also go back on some of the things that we talked about on the uh, December conference call and the emails that were sent out then at attachments and since then I've gotten the, the same documents there in Ghana and I've came back and rescanned them so I've resent those same emails out so the goal of today's conference call is also to talk about those two emails one is a land search um, and land survey uh, email and the other one is getting started email with application and things like that and then the third email is just the uh, conference call information that was uh, created in a newsletter and was sent to everyone that's uh, part of the uh, group and also sent to our this, uh, direct uh, email list the goal is just to connect with those who want to get started and literally if you want to get started um, the email that says get started you have to reply back with 100% of the details that's needed if you don't have everything right now, that's fine to reply back. Uh, so we're going to go over all of that so everything could be clear. All right, the first level of documentation I want to go over is the videos that we've done. We've done three conference calls, gotten 17 videos of us um, in reference to the land. I want to start the conference call by going over that. So. For those who haven't seen any of the land videos, what well, we have it set up and on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007. And any email that you received, you know, you have a YouTube link. And basically, once you go to YouTube, you can just scroll down just a little bit on our YouTube channel. You'll see Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community in Ghana. And since it's YouTube, it's just all videos. First three videos are those uh, three previous conference calls, uh, one one hour and six minutes, another one one hour and seven minutes, and the last one we did 45 minutes, and that was the land search and survey. And then scrolling down from four to 14, is just our meeting and our connection with the chief and the elders in the community. Uh, so it's based on this different presentation, including uh, legal advice and a legal team just explaining all the legal processes that we have to go through. And then you scroll down to 17, and that's those videos of us walking on the land, showing you the background of the land, the area of the land, and you know, letting you see that it's a clean, virgin land. It's something that we're building from the ground up. And then um, 18, we come back and thank um, the Paramount Chief. And then 19 and 20 is just us showing you the community is close by the beach. And then 20 is just a video we just showing you a glimpse of the beach that you're close to. Um, literally, it's about a five-minute drive uh, from the beach, and it's a nice, easy walk. Uh, so the goal is to organize a community where we're in a clean area of Ghana, nice access to the beach, a uh, reasonable price for land, and this meet, uh, connect you know, with wonderful people who who see our goals and and don't want to get in our way. Just want to be able to offer us the opportunity to connect in that community. The biggest thing right now is uh, those videos that you're interested in joining the community. Um, we're showing you from the ground up pre-conference calls with us organizing everything, talking about the overview, talking about how we escaped um, the last project, uh, Garvey Town. We've been put in a situation you know, where we're connecting with people and we're trying to be a part of a community and they, 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 they don't have a clue on how to accommodate our customers or our group members or, or investors who want to live in a community. And that is a big problem. We have people who want to make a move, live and do business in Ghana, want to be a part of a community, want to do certain things. And a lot of our own folks get in the way because of their, their selfish ways or their dictatorship way and feeling like this is how people should live and do things. I got to tell people the business that we're in is administration and the straight up just accommodations. Uh, so. Um, you know, we've organized this project specifically for those of us from, you know, here in the African diaspora uh, that just want to be a part of a community and want to be 
able to just build the type of homes they want to build, don't have a bunch of, you know, uh, people telling them what, this is what they have to do. And, you know, you want to be able to have the freedom to enjoy your repatriation, enjoy your reconnection. Uh, so laying out a foundation to let you meet everyone that's a part of the project. And this is a, like a, not everyone is able to make this journey. And some of the people that's part of our group, well, most of the people from our actual group wasn't able to make it. It was just our tour group. Uh, that was able to make the uh, journey. Uh, so the recording is, is, you know, it's a direct introduction. And we'll do our best to, whenever we go next time. You know, it won't be this long out ceremony. It'll just be more focused on the land. Uh, so maybe for those who didn't get a chance to connect, um, we shot the videos as best as we can for you to just get a feel of what's going on. And they're you know, looking for all and every types of feedback from everyone. I want to make sure you know, everyone let us know if they, if anything is not looking right or they feel strange or they feel a bad energy from something because when you you know when you do all this you have to steal people energy and you have to do all these things and you have to you know look at the legal aspect of it you have to cover all bases and that's what we're doing with showing you this documentation so these are the videos the next thing we're going to move to is we're going to move to the website uh, africa for the africans dot org and on our website, africaforafricans.org, uh, what we have set up is uh, once you look at the main menu, you'll see Black Star, Repatriation, and Pan-African Community. Uh, doing a screen sharing, you'll be able to see everything that we're doing. And whenever we change uh, screens, you'll be able to see that also. So there's a list of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's a list of 10 articles for Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Communities. And these are documents uh, to give you full details of the whole process. And also this is based on the, the email that was sent, which was the land survey and land search email, and then the getting started email. So all those documentation that you saw in the email is right here. But at the same time, too, the email is just, it gives you those attachments, which is a key thing. So you can see what, how the passport it has to be scanned and things like that. So I want to just go through this, um, all of these uh, articles. Now, overview of the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community. Now, this overview is not like the full overview that was sent in the email. Each of these um, articles have different aspects of what was put in that eight-page presentation. So this gives you this, like, the direct uh, introduction, and it shows um, a picture of, of our December uh, 2019 uh, tour group with, uh, with the Paramount Chief, the community elders. Uh, so that was that direct con uh, connection. Then the other two photos at the very bottom just shows us on the land. And you can see it's just, just um, it's not a lot of big trees, but it's just um, all bare land. And then the key thing why you, why you have to look at the video because you can see 360 degrees and you can see every aspect of the land around you and where we're walking from and where we're going. That's the key thing about the uh, videos. And the photo galleries that we have, I'm literally just in a position of uploading them. And as soon as we finish the conference call, they'll be there on the Facebook group page. And you see some of these same photos and you'll see the process of the meeting to go into the land. And it's the same flow as you'll see in the videos. I'm just showing you video and then photo uh, documentation. Uh, so all this does is give you that uh, direct introduction about the uh, community. And the goal is not to go over this because we have literally have gone over this the last few months over and over. I'm just showing you what I've done to put it online to give other people or people who are interested the direct access to where they can just click on it from the website and maybe they don't have to just do it trying to find emails. Uh, land survey and location of the community. All right, so once you open the link, um, you'll see the GPS coordinates, the actual uh, uh, degrees, longitude and latitude, a plan of land, or we call a land survey. And this is the original one that was done with 23 acres and 15 acres was cut out of it. And then below shows you the 15 acre property, which is what we're operating from now, 15 acres. This is the same thing I sent via email and I sent as a JPEG. That way you can, when you click on it, it expands and it may not do that on our screen. You can adjust your computer to, to zoom in and zoom out. 
Uh, so those are nice, clean scans. Um, like you know, like we like to show people nice, clean, professional work. This last time we had the same documents. Um, they weren't up to the standards of things and how I do business, but I also explained to people I want to at least show you the documents and then when I get to Ghana, I'll get them and then scan them. So now that part is done. And right, so what you do um, when you're on the website, you just click back on Black Star, uh, Repatriation of Pan-African Community, and it'll go back to the list of menu. Uh, article number three, Lands Commission Search. So this does give you um, a nice image of the actual uh, documentation is stamped and everything. You see the dates. And the goal is to show you the flow of all these connections. And basically showing you that the land, the 15 acres of land that we're looking to acquire is clear and there's no issues in the land and it's owned by the people that it's owned by. So that's the purpose of giving you the uh, Lands Commission paperwork and also the land survey. And the next document that we'll get it will be the indenture. Once we pay 50% of the total, we'll be able to get the land paperwork and then we'll get an MOU to pay the balance. Uh, so uh, everything is, um, so when I get to getting started, I explain the cost and everything. Um, so all everyone has to do is just flow with what they have to do and everything else is taken care of by us um, to make sure that you know, we get this process uh, finished. And it's a, it's a situation where it don't take forever to do these things. You just got to be consistent. All right, so let me uh, click back up and go to the fourth article. All right, so the fourth article is prime objective of the community. And these are the things that we talked about, just some of the main aspects of it, uh, especially who is this community for. Not everyone is welcome. One of those situations where you let people know that uh, it's nothing personal. And it's what you know. We're, it's not a whole lot of land, and we're just looking for a certain mindset and energy of uh, brothers and sisters who fit the flow of what we're looking to do. So that's why it's important that everyone read it and be clear on everything. And anyone wants to have a personal conversation with anything or something that they don't like or feel, uh, let's communicate. If it's another project that we have that we can um, connect you with, uh, which you know, we, which there's like another project in Cape Coast that has a whole lot more land. And that's not that's not as private as what we're doing uh, in this project. So it talks about the 15 acres of land available for residential and commercial, but also there's a whole lot more land as we illustrate on the videos. So what you literally, um, for those who get in on this foundation, that's fine. For for those who don't, you know, it's what it is. You just have to flow what's set up later on. But the cost and everything is not going to be the same once we have to reacquire new land same time too we didn't want to just try to go out there and just get a whole bunch of land and then have a and put ourselves in a with a, with a big bill the, the amount we have to pay is reasonable to just pay for the land all right build build something with it and keep the momentum going um, operations like Fiancra and Garvey Town they literally sold their souls for hundreds of acres of land and end up doing doing no development with it so it really just don't make no sense to just go out there with that bold move and then have big talk and big mouth, say you're going to do this, you're going to build this, and we're going to do all these things. And I've seen so many, you know, them and a few other people do it, and it sounds nice, but, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not going to make it work, you end up just making a fool of yourself. So um, I'm putting everything that we have, our reputation and everything, on the line to make this project work because we're tired of being disappointed by all the incompetent black people, unorganized, unprofessional, and just not knowing how to do simple, basic business one-on-one and communicating and accommodating people. So this is what we're into now. This is our most important investment, building this community so we can move Bomani technology in Africa for the Africans, uh, operation in its own building to where we can hire people and expand business operation. Uh, so we do have a medical center on there and community center, office buildings, uh, and a few things like that. And the goal is to literally acquire the additional land, uh, especially once we get some momentum going, and to build that onto the community. So or another thing we can do is just leave a few acres to do these things, and then once that's finished, then we just acquire additional land. And we've talked to the chief, and you know he's clear on what we're looking to do, and he's open to giving us as, as much land as possible once we take care of the ones what has been um, acquired and followed to respectfully and organized. So it is up to us to make this work. 
at the end of the day, um, we have a wonderful project where we have recruited some of the best of our brothers to look out for all of us. Uh, so those of us who put money in this project, you have an equal voice as the rest of us to communicate and all decisions are made by us. That's it. No one else. Alright, so let me scroll back up as we just go through these uh, documents. Uh, business opportunities, um, so I'm not going to go through much of that. And then the next one is building and buying homes. So those last two ones, we're going to just expand on the information on there. Uh, but it's just to give you a basic introduction that we're looking to organize business at a higher level. Uh, if, and for those who want to get additional land, maybe 20, 30 acres to build factories or build beach resorts or certain things, we're there as your direct contact, your direct um, representation to make sure this works. So that's what we also do in just representing people who want access to certain things using our legal team, our consultation team, and people who we have built great relationship with to make sure everything works out good. Uh, we're in the business. We don't want to hear people losing money or people getting ripped off or anything like, like that. Uh, that has caused enough setback with this movement. Um, and you know, for those of us who really care about this, we have to make sure we put ourselves in a position to make sure we look out for our brothers and sisters and you know, watch the folks who just you know looking to victimize us. And that includes those who are repatriated from America and have gone there and messed their life up. And now they just like in a situation where they just look at some of us coming as people who they can just you know basically just overcharge for certain things and just play certain games. And I've seen a few people. I've called a few of them out. And I've you know, let a few of them know that, you know what I'm saying, that we're going to have problems if they come, you know, come in our direction and start anything. You know, so uh, we're moving as an organized, strong unit to look out for each other. And that's one of the things that, you know, we have, we have had to our advantage is our strength in numbers. You know, anytime I move to the African continent, we're doing things, is we always have strong numbers and we always just organize and focus together and look out for each other. Uh, so we just got to keep that momentum going. Uh, membership rules and uh, code of conduct, uh, some of it may sound strict and may sound simple, but it's just trying to get people to open their minds to just be respectful to the highest level and be as righteous as possible for to our brothers and sisters. And any kind of you know, certain things that we do in America, we could just leave that here in America and things like that. Uh, so that's one of those things and then people know it's not going to be tolerated and you know they, in America anything goes but in our community we don't operate like anything goes you know it's about black power nation building black man black woman and children nothing else uh, so it's all laid out and illustrated in writing and and, and so on our uh, next one our uh, membership application uh, so that um, I have it there on the website but um, I'd just rather for you to just email me if you don't have one via email and I'll just send you the getting started email with the application and the sample application and the PDF and Word application where you can you, know, you can type it in using Adobe Acrobat or you can type it in just using Microsoft Word and then you can print it out and sign the paperwork. Pictures and videos, that's a good one right here. Uh, so uh, we went over the YouTube link, then we got, then once you go to the Facebook group of uh, Black Star Pan African Community, uh, click on photos, you'll see the photos, uh, hopefully I have them all up by the morning. And then um, the same thing you'll see, uh, you click on videos, you see the videos. Uh, photos, you have to click on albums also. The goal is to create different albums as we go there and record more and more uh, videos and same thing with photos. Uh, but the ultimate uh, f uh, link is the YouTube playlist and the website uh, documentation. All right, the last one is uh, getting started, plot size and prices. So you see a photo of um, Kwabna, who's our consultant. I had him um, research all of what we're dealing with, the land, meeting the chief, meeting the lawyer that I set up uh, for him to meet, and meeting the survey. So uh, all these people got a chance to connect and know each other before they actually met me, but I've connected all of them together to basically organize a perfect set of us and I explained to them the painful situation that we did uh, we went through with those unorganized fools in, at Garvey Town um, so and told them that you know we're not you know we're looking to just basically be clear about everything up front and so far so good everything is good and um, they're not there to get in our way they just there f as long as we follow the flow of the rules and the country and everything you know, we're good to go uh, so 
the main thing that uh, we're going to do is we're going to just organize the land so for people who want two floor homes or whatever type of homes you want you can get it and it'll be section off so everybody have the same homes in the different sections and that's it and that is the biggest problem we had with those people at Garvey Town um, instead of, you know when people are coming and people want certain things you just organize it for them uh, you do the work you don't re give reasons and excuses you do the work and the same thing I'm reaching out to the rest of my brothers and sisters let's do the work and stop giving reasons and excuses why we can't progress and make this thing happen in Africa building community building more and more investments this is our structure right here of a team you know, with a connection to where you know, we all have each other's back. Uh, so this is how you prevent against being around crooks or people selling your dream. You know, and then you know, naturally we have everybody recorded and we have uh, every legal paperwork signed with everybody's signature and things like that. And you just have to be that hardcore. Uh, and that's what I learned from dealing with the folks at Garvey Town because I don't know what they did before we got there. But when I started looking around, it's like, Where's all of these things, and when are we going to meet the people who actually are part of the community? So before you even pitch your money down, you meet the folks right there. And even when you want to come, you can meet um, the group there. And also we have it set up to where if you get there in the country, uh, you just have to organize our brother Kwabna or our legal representation, our Richard, uh, and we just get uh, you meet up and check out the community and things. And then the coordinates and everything is right there and things like that. Uh, so family, let's get right to getting started. Again, the best thing to do is just use it from the, uh, the email. It is $2,000 for one plot of land, and that's 80 by 100. And then it's a $500 administrative cost. It just explain all of the administrative uh, costs. And the note you see down there said, the clearing, setting up, and installation of pillars with your name is included in the administrative cost. So um, the last administrative cost that we had was $300, and this one is $500, uh, so the 200 is for the land clearing. The last group of people that we had that wanted to cancel from the last project, Garvey Town, and come on this project, were just editing your receipt and editing your paperwork, um, and hopefully just have all those things done for everyone. All It's about 25 of us, maybe a little bit less, and get it out to you guys this week. So you guys can see um, what's your balance on your account. And for those who send deposits in for the account, we just get your receipt together and you'll see um, what you paid and the balance and things like that. Uh, so all of that I'm working on the beginning of this week. When you're looking at uh, the payment options, you see Zelle Pay and you see a few other payments and then you see payment options. And so to get started, uh, you have to at least send in the uh, deposit plus the deposit on land. So basically half of the $2,000 to get started. And, and what we need is literally uh, half, of the, half of that amount because our goal is to put together a little bit more than half of the amount in the next few months to get our land indenture. That means we own the land. And then the MOU, as long as we complete the balance of it, the final clearing of our paperwork is good, saying that we own this land and this is our community and then individuals who are interested in the individuals can register their own plots and get those things set up and i'm working on finding more details about that but basically everybody will be able to have their own legal paperwork and that's one of the biggest difference from dealing with the folks at garvey town and their fraudulent paperwork you'll be able to have legal paperwork that way it shows your name and show you own the land and you're not you're not you don't have like a user's license or some other stuff that they try to pull on us so when we're doing these things, you know, let's do it the legal way and let's do it the most organized way, organized way and let's not take shortcuts. I, I remember saying what Gary Dean said, he saw a loophole in the system and they went and you know, they got the land set up and everything. What they mean by the loophole is that they realized that they didn't have to register the land and they can use traditional laws or whatever, but we don't live in a traditional law world, we live in a legal law world. So. I'm not going to go back and forth with them about traditional law and legal law. We have to do things legal by the country of Ghana, which when we speak to our lawyer, he's laid everything out based on how it's done and we talk to everyone else. What we're doing is that same right process. So you have your clean land search right there now and you have the land survey and uh, we'll get the indenture and we'll get MOUs and things like that. Uh, so 
promising family, no shortcuts, that's, and it's not worth it. The little extra time that we need to work and get things done is worth it. Uh, it will save us a lifetime. And um, uh, Nana was able to give us 99 years, uh, so you'll see that in the new just the uh, paperwork and information on the uh, website, 99 year lease. And so that's what your own paperwork will show. You know, so while we're just processing and going through all of this, uh, doing our best, uh, while we're learning, we're educating and sharing with everybody else. So if there's something we don't know, um, it's, you know, we'll, you know, you give us a little time, we'll get the answers back from you. All I have to do is reach out to Richard or Nana or Kwabna, and they'll get it taken care of. And anything anyone see that's missing or that maybe they're not clear on us should be done, we want you to speak your mind and speak up now versus later on, because people have a way I want to say, oh, yeah, I knew this wasn't going to work. I knew these other people that y'all was dealing with weren't good. They weren't on y'all level and things like that. But, like, well, thank you. I've, I've, I've realized that. But it would be nice if more and more people said that and maybe encourage us to just do our own project. But nevertheless, uh, you learn from every situation you deal with. And all these unorganized people who did this operation, I learned a lot from them. I learned what not to do. So that's a great thing. Um, and we're just here to be as transparent and real as possible. And... We're building more than just a community. We're building a future for our children, a future of skills exchange, and so on and so on. As right, so a family, let me. Uh, so that is the documentation on, on our website. Uh, so it went over these videos, the documentation, and the only thing which I have right here, which I wish I could just click on, click on post to say that the, vi the videos are loaded on there. But like I guess once again, it's literally a flow of how the videos are taken. So that's how the photos look. And the other thing that I have set up was that nice flow of the uh, newsletter, which all the things that we've talked about, uh, email documentation, getting started, update on legal aspect of community, legal, land search, land deposit, and things like that, that's all been covered. So I want to pick up at six, um, uh, the vision for Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African community. Uh, so. Uh, we're looking to this. Uh, we have a nice uh, WhatsApp group page. Just have to get more and more people engaged in us talking more about uh, the things that we have to work on. Looking to just organize more of us into different uh, specific projects and committees. And I wish I could just like have a list of those committees and put people in. But we're still trying to formulate that. And then the uh, group that's working on bylaws still trying to formulate all those things. So while we're doing these things and trying to get other things going, it's like several things going. So our goal is to make it to where as soon, maybe in the next few months, you can literally just be able to get access to your land to where you know you can start building. Once again, don't want to rush anything. So just want everybody just to be with us, and want everyone to just take the time out to make sure they read through all the things that we send and be clear on everything. Um, and one of the things that we're going to get is this: there's some good questions on what everyone I've looked to so far. So what I'm going to do, uh, family, I'm going to um, stop right there and open up for questions and answer, and then we'll just go to a few more things and then do another question and answer uh, session, and then we close. All right, so it is star six to unmute yourself, and then just give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. Hi, Bomani, this is Kim. My question is, after everything is settled, are you going to provide us with a list of builders or should we start now looking for our own builders? Because personally, I'm only interested in something very small, maybe one bedroom or two bedroom type housing. Um, and I just want to know if, if you are going to provide us with a list of people we can utilize or should I start looking for someone now? Oh uh, no, we have people that's going to clear the land, um, and we have people that's uh, going to be a uh, few lists of people basically providing different home builds. So when we section the community off, you know, for those who want more of the natural building and the dome houses and something small like you, we have one or two mm -hmm. people do those homes. Example, like uh, Brandon from Migrant and Culture, I just have to talk back with him uh, once we get to a good part, um, and so on. And then now we have our brother Quasi Prempe and a few other people. So the goal is to okay. look and then show you what they can do and things like that. And beyond that, the goal is also we still got to get a community layout of where the plots are going to be and things like that. So I got that, that was going to be my next question. How is the community going to be laid out? And when do you think that will be forthcoming? 
Um, the goal is to work on all those things this month. Uh, we're looking for volunteers, but uh, I'm not sure what happened to our volunteers in a group page, so I'll figure it out myself. Uh, but so for those who are listening, I mean, if you're open, uh, this, you know, it's a conversation situation where you just have to call me and communicate with me and we get it going. Uh, don't just send an email and say, oh, and things. So uh, there's things that, that's being worked on that, um, you know, I was hoping to have more people volunteer to work on them, but uh, we're going to get all of them done uh, this month. I got a question. Hello. Uh, sure. Give your name and where you're calling from. Uh, question. Miss Miss Cooper from Florida. Uh, hold on, Miss Cooper. Um, uh, will you finish? If not, uh, what's your next question? I was finished. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Uh, so I'll keep you posted with that um, list and things like that. And basically, my goal is to send something out simple to say this is our next game plan and things like that. And, you know, nice little email and provide a few folks uh, details in there. All right, uh, so uh, Ms. Cooper, uh, go ahead um, with your question. Yes, she mentioned a dome house. Is that the same thing as a chalet, like at One Africa, those little round houses? Uh, no, it's not, but it's in the same situations and sections where you would have natural homes or like chalets and uh, dome houses and maybe a container homes or you, you know, a, a section where you have these unique homes that kind of complement each other, and then you know you have a section with one floor homes and a section with two floor homes, and then for the big money folks, they could build a mansion in the back. Well, what about uh, people who just want to do those earth bag houses? Do they do stuff like that? Yeah, so it would be the same thing to be under the natural special homes um, section. So and, does, and does anyone have a, a price on what that would cost to build one of those? Earth bag houses? Yeah, anywhere from um, 10000 to 50000 depends on the uh, square foot and things like that. Okay, so, great. Thank you so much. Uh, absolutely, and um, as long as you're on our email list, we'll keep you posted right now. As you can see, we're just building a foundation with the details. About the infrastructure, will you have uh, westernized like sewage systems? Uh, the goal is to do uh, septic tanks. Uh, it'd be nice to build a community where you put the full drainage and all the good stuff, and uh, it'd be nice. Uh, so it just depends on which big money person step up to lead that charge on that. Uh, other than that, uh, we're keeping it uh, to where you can just get you can get solar and you can get um, septic system. And as far as our water, water is city water, or you can just get your own um, borehole, and or you can do um catch water system, things like that. Okay, so thank you. Option, but it's encouraging people in the world of the sustainable living. Okay, thank you so much. Absolutely. What my name? Uh, greetings, can you give your name and uh, where you calling from? Um, Jeanette Richmond, uh, Atlanta, Georgia. I was uh, wondering about the storage container homes, if uh, that you guys would have those there. Uh, those would be on the special homes, um, earth bag, bag uh, dome house, uh, chalets, um, the hut homes, uh, things like that. Um, so that container homes. So that's um, all available in that special section that you're just looking to be, create real unique and nice uh, to just represent natural building. And then for people who just want a one floor and a two floor, regular homes with brick and everything, that will be in another section. So just trying to. Try, just trying not to basically the last the problem that we have with the last project is the limitation like everything that everybody just mentioned they would have said no 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 and drive you crazy with the no's and then you ask them what can we do uh, but the answer is yes to those things and because when I was dealing with them I realized that all you got to do is section everything off and lay it out uh, in, your, in your, your graft and everything and make it work you know just you have to just learn how to accommodate people so the goal is yes and the goal is to have a few people who can build those different homes and make the goal is to probably it's just push those more than anything else because in those you're using all natural materials and you're using things that are very local, so the cost of building those homes would be drastically low. So that's what we're pushing and encouraging. But then yeah, people want their brick homes and they want something solid and nice, and I'm with them on that also. This is the next stage that we're getting into after we did all the you know visiting the land, getting all the paperwork sending the deposit, making sure everything is legit and organized.
So we can now move on those uh, other things uh, uh, respectfully right away. Thank you. Absolutely, you're welcome. All right, everybody's muted back. All right, uh, family, it is star six to unmute yourself. Hello? Uh, yes, uh, guided with your name, where you calling for me a question? This is Catherine calling from New Jersey. Do we have a plan for waste management? Uh, septic tanks and let some, someone um, work out the investment to, um, to, you know, to put uh, certain, uh, certain systems in underground. Other than that, we're using septic tanks and then we're using our okay. solar power or you can get city power and then you have access to water or city water or you can get truck water or you can do your own methods of water for purifying. Okay, what about trash removal? Uh, trash removal, uh, same situation now. We just have to organize something to where we just do we have our own trash operation. So it's something where we have to, everything we have to set up is, we have to set up on our own as a community. So I have a group community of those who are invested in the community and I'll add your name to it. I got your, um, your payment. And those are the conversations that we're, we're having and trying to get a few people to lead certain initiatives and do certain research. Like that's a real good one, trash removal, waste sewer management, all those things is key. So the idea is uh, while we're in development stages is to try to get the best ideas from the best people and see what works best for us as a group and we literally talk about it and vote on it as a group and work those process. So a lot of things is really set up for a group to make the decisions on and basically organizing the foundation and then there's one person of different people that you know that are living in the community and want to give uh, my opinion but don't want to take over the project trying to keep this project from being controlled by dictators I have a question when she finishes um, I'm finished thank you and thank you Catherine and you know I'll definitely be connecting I've got to get your paperwork organized and uh, let you know when everything is finalized okay thank uh, you Appreciate you. All right, so I'm gonna put you back on mute. All right, the last person um, that uh, mentioned that they were on hold, uh, give your name, where you're calling from, your question. The waste management question. I was told uh, by someone that there is an African American sister who has started her own waste management company in Ghana. FYI. Yeah, I don't know it either, so anyone who knows it can always just email us other than that. Uh, our goal is to put our great minds together as a group because right now it's over 30 of us, um, very sharp minds people, and, we, and all of us have been waiting to get to this point so we can start discussing these things. If anyone finds that out or if anyone have any suggestions or things that they recommend, those things can be sent to, in a nice email to us, and I'll check all the emails, and I'm always looking for things like that. Okay. Excellent. All right, Green family, we are getting ready to close the call and just trying to get some more questions. I don't have much to really go over other than just uh, letting you know I sent the getting started email to everyone and if you didn't get the getting started email in the land search uh, email, uh, you can always email me and say, can you send me the getting started information in the land search? I prefer, even though I got the information online, I prefer everyone to use these two emails because everything is in attachments. You can download them on your computer and you can have all these files saved in your computer in a folder and everything. That way you can just go back and look through it and you can see the example of all the things that's being required. Uh, and the main thing is uh, we need a national criminal background check from everyone. If you was on the Garvey Town project with us, I uh, did background checks for all of us, which was very painful, but I got it done for all of us, so I still have those records. Um, yeah, but everyone else, you have to do your own process and then just email us the PDF file. Uh, so those are those emails. And then uh, the goal is to just keep updating this um, conference call newsletter uh, to MailChimp. And a lot of the information that you see on there will still remain on there as you just update it. But for those who have not seen it and those who just need full clarity, literally I'll put everything in that newsletter also, all the links um, uh, and then this how everything got started, how we connected, the process that we went through, and 
you know, just trying to share with people all of the legal process of how you go acquire land and the precautions and things like that. Our goal is to you know, make this a simple process for everyone and also our goal is to go after all these crooks that have robbed our people and have, you know, mess the energy of, of, of people who want to come and live and do business. You know, organizing a group of lawyers to come after all these crooks. I tell them they, they can keep running but they, they can't hide because we're coming after them. Uh, we have to get to the get to the point where we can organize the people and do legit organized business without a bunch of this idiots this consistently just messing up the flow of things and you know and those of us who are in this business of things we shouldn't let stupid people mess it up for the for us and I'm one of them people that's I'm you know that I'm that I'm always telling people that I'm not letting anyone that's getting our way up what we're looking to do or anyone mess up our money or our investments and what we're looking to do and I'm serious about that stuff so I tell anyone that if you're not serious about what we're doing and what we're building, don't waste our time and, let's, and we don't want to waste your time either. And for those who are out there that's looking to wait till we get there to see that if they can mess with us or anything, you know, we're strong and we're coming as a unit. You know, so, you know, we want everyone to know that, you know, you're going to be safe when we're rebuilding. We have the highest level of security with military, technical, tactical people, and we believe in, you know, all of these things. We're not just, just, you know, people who just travel around Africa. You know, I tell people that, you know, don't get it confused just because you, you see us doing tourism. You know, we're serious organized business people. And our military background is serious. It's, you know, I've seen these white people pull off crazy stuff because all kind of things. just because they're organized and they plan things out. And they're very strategic. And they come together and they communicate. Simple, basic things. You know, nothing that any of us can't do. You know, so that's our goal as the leadership of this of this energy is just to keep us organized and just let everyone know that we don't want to do all of the, the leadership work and the leg work and things like that. You know, we want other people who are open to step up to, to you know, put themselves in a position to for us to organize ourselves together. You know, family also it's been a few months we've been going over this from having the changeover from Garby Town prior to this and just have used a whole lot of my energy to get this far and I'm just thankful that everything has worked out perfect especially the wonderful December 29th energy of meeting the community and driving through the land going to the beach you know, that was great so I'm looking at all of our documents we're, we're good and for those who are not part of the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community uh, in Ghana group on Facebook um, you can just type in those words in Facebook and uh, there's a link to every document that was sent out where you can just connect to Facebook and join the group. I accept messages from that and anything anyone have to share. Uh, that's just another way we can communicate. Let me see what else we have. It sounds like someone line is open. Uh, can you give your name or where you're calling from? Any question? Uh, Charles, did you have a question? Uh, yes. Sure, yes, right. Bamani, can you hear me? Uh, loud and clear. Okay. Bamani, I was just, you know, regarding the waste management, um, I think some of the waste can actually be burnt and some could be used as compost as well. All right, great idea, yes. Um, in the world of this, um, um, the project is based on sustainable living and us trying to be as sustainable as possible. So definitely you want to use as much compost as possible, uh, as much uh, recycling as possible. And... Um, and then general, general waste management, um, you process it through, um, we have scheduled a truck pickup uh, once or twice a week for our specific community, so that's easy to do, or we get into the business of our own waste management, uh, so, exactly. uh, which is what our goal is to encourage our community to do. Everything we need to do on our own and build our own independent operation, uh, including uh, city power is fine, but it's ideal you build your own power system, but you know, all these things take a while to build in, so, so that's why anyone who wants to take the lead on any project and want to even be an investor in any of those projects to bring certain things to the community, it's open to. Well, other than that, we just use, flown with the basic things we have, um, the septic tanks, uh, city power, solar power, and, uh, and the, you know, the different aspects of, to get water. And then the good thing about it, we'll buy a fresh lake and then we'll also buy the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Uh, you know, it was just an idea, you know, that, you know, some of the trash could be burned and the other, you know, some could be used as compost. It's just the recyclable stuff that, you know, we can't bury in, you know, in the ground so easily, but that we could probably have that hauled away somehow. But 
you know. Yeah, absolutely, a simple thing. And Some neighborhoods here in the United States that are rural, they don't have a trash collection service, and they have to actually burn their trash. So I know that through experience, I know some things can be used as compost and everything. Exactly. So, you know, you just, we make the most of the things. And the goal is, again, to do everything in the highest level of sustainable living. And, you know, basically just recycle everything as much as possible in the term of sustainable. Yeah. And you said, you, you know, like with the construction of the houses, you say you're going to be using, like, traditional materials in building some of the properties, correct? Yes, exactly. There's no, you don't want to do any limitation. I've talked to a ridiculous amount of people and... They have different things that they want to do, and you know, you want to you want to see people live their dreams and build the kind of homes they want. So the the biggest demand is these sustainable homes, and that was the problem I had with these people at Garvey Town. It was like it was the best idea of what people wanted, and they're telling them they were going to give them some brick, earth ram uh, bungalow homes, and which don't work for us. Uh, so um, from the you know from the you know the many different methods. I mean, there's no limitation on the method. Because what you want to show your, your society and show the future of the world that we, you know, that we need to think about sustainability and think about how we're not going to destroy the planet and destroy our, our ecosystem. And that's the future right there, these homes and everything else you're looking to build. Just, you get into the world of just the green technology also. And especially since you're building from the ground up, you have the, the options, you have that great opportunity to go that route. Okay. Because cause I, I actually found out that some of the, the traditional ways how they build houses in Africa, it saves you a lot of energy as well, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Some things are built into the earth to where you have a you know, better cooling system in your home. Yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. You don't need AC when you use the traditional way. The house stays cooler in the summer. Like I said, we're, we're at Naimakas, and there's no AC in there. There's a fan, but I'm never hot in there. Mm -hmm. so, Built to, but then again, you know, it's, you're right about the ocean. Yeah, I understand. So we should we should be a few degrees cooler anyway. Exactly, and you know, uh, so. Uh, but then you know, you have people who want what they want. You know what I mean? So no problem. You know, put those things up. Uh, so it's it's going to be interested. Uh, I mean, I'm, you know, we have a chance to build something very special, and uh, show our people that we can actually come together and build something and actually get it done versus run around you know, like a crazy chicken chasing our tail. Yeah, definitely. Well, I definitely, as you know already, I'm definitely coming in May, you know, to visit because it's going to be my first trip. Yeah, uh, perfect. So I need to connect with you even like this week so we can get you set up, make sure you're clear on uh, visas and paperwork and everything and get you going. And yes. Also, for anyone that's coming, yes. uh, when we go to Ghana, once we leave from Accra, we're going right to the land and we're going to have a few hours to visit the community, do certain things, and you know, meet some of the main people. So for those who are looking to come, you'll be able to get that done. And for those who are thinking about coming, um, and, or you're going to be in Ghana, just connect with me and I'll give you the, the time when we're going to meet and connect it's, you know, and everything so we, you can see the community. And I'll go also to shoot some more videos and do more interviews and do a few more things and keep the documentation flowing and show progress from the ground up. So definitely, so I appreciate your energy. So family, uh, anyone else have any questions? Uh, we're going to close the call in a minute uh, if no one else have any questions. All right, and once again, star six to unmute yourself. All right, other than that, so anybody else have anything, just you can send me a detailed email. I'll just reply back to you. And if we need to talk, we'll set up uh, communication. All right, other than that, and then for those who have called me, please just make sure you review all the documentation before we communicate. Uh, the getting started, the land search, the videos and things like that make it easier for us to communicate. As I look to just get a list of 30 people that want to be added to our next folks so we can complete this community and work on the next phase of the community. Uh, so the first 30 people with everything together, that's who we're given, uh, who, who, who have access to those additional plots, uh, but 25 plots are taken from our previous groups that were transferred from the last project. So it's about 30, 35 plots available. Uh, but the good thing about it, for those who don't jump on that, you'll see our progress. And those who jump in early, you know, those are the foundation. Uh, so, you know, in the United States, 
the foundation get the best deal and for those who want to watch and speculate and kind of get a feel and everything you know you just come in when you're ready but understand the cost of everything goes up from there so that is the difference in that situation everyone appreciate your time once again this is Bomani Tamba I'm organizing the Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community in Ghana and I have all of our documentation on our website at Africa for the Africans .org, and videos on our YouTube channel youtube.com forward slash Bomani2007 and photos on our Facebook Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community Group Alright so family everyone take care enjoy the rest of the night and I'll connect back with everyone you take care.